What's going on everybody in the building, man? Today, guys, we have the Kalashnikov USA KP9, also known as the Vitgas. And the KP9 has been around for quite some time. Initially developed in 2004, and actually a direct descendant of the PP19 Bison, which was developed or created by Viktor Kalashnikov, as well as Alexia. I'm probably saying the first name incorrect, but Dragunov. We know those names, very familiar names as well. Viktor Kalashnikov is the son of Mikhail. Kyla Kalashnikov, Mikhail Kalashnikov, and this gun is still in service today from various ministries from the SPETNAS, as well as the Federal Security Service and the Federal Guard Service over in Russia. The Vitgaz was, as stated, direct descendant of the PP Bison. One of the reasons was the cylinder, the magazine used for that PP Bison, Bison was just giving issues, so they switched it out to, of course, this typical nine millimeter magazine that you see here. And, you know, it's been around ever since. It's a great suppressor hose gun. In general, this is the thousand round review. We put several rounds through it, no issues whatsoever, suppressed, unsuppressed. It is a lot like the AK-74 in looks, but it's definitely a lot different as well. One being the cartridge is the nine millimeter cartridge and not the 762 by 39 or the 545. And one other thing is this is a direct blowback, you know, nine millimeter gun. This is not a gas operated gun like the AK-47, AK-74. This, which is typically the gas tube, is now a weight that is in this part right here that is connected to the bolt. And then the spring is still there as well, as well as the guide rod that is featured on AK-74s are still utilized in this gun. It being a direct blowback, of course, meaning when the gun is fired and ignited and the bullets traveling, the gas from that is being utilized and pushed back to chamber another round. There's also gas going out the front of the barrel and gas coming out of the side right here. It sometimes to some people, they, you know, some people think it's pretty gassy. I would say in a more confined area, shooting this indoors, it's a little gassy, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that would just make me hate this gun. But shooting it suppressed, it's even a little bit more gassy. Indoors, you can feel yourself, you know, feel that gas sometimes in the face. But I would say I shoot a lot more now outdoors, so that really isn't an issue. So for the most part, it's not a complaint for me. The muzzle device features these rectangles going around, little rect rectangular slots going around. And I read that, you know, of course it's for muzzle rise and, you know, helping a little bit with the recoil. We are shooting a nine millimeter round, so it's not that much of a big recoil, but I also heard it's just there to protect the actual muzzle itself. The KP9 has now, you know, been updated to the PPK20, which is now in production since 2020, which is a very, it looks a lot like this. Is this a little bit of difference going on on the furniture here that is now being utilized and still by the Russian government. The Kalashnikov USA is made 100% in the USA, and it is the closest clone that we have in the USA to that KP9. There are other companies out there like Palmetto State Armory with the AKV, which we've reviewed on this channel, which nothing wrong with them whatsoever. But if you're somebody who wants that closest clone correct to the actual KP9 that has been, you know, around for years, this is the way you want to go with Kalashnikov USA. Haven't had any failures to feed, any hangups. Like I stated, suppressed, unsuppressed, shoots phenomenally. There are no issues as far as I know that they've, you know, a lot of issues that they fixed, at least with the outer battery detonation that was causing issues with several guns out there. A lot of that has been addressed and fixed and there hasn't really been issues like that that have happened since then. And when it comes to, you know, those PCCs out there, like I love my Scorpions, I love my, you know, HK or AP5, you know, MP5, different variants out there. And then you have, of course, the KP9. I want to put those three at the top. You feel me? Scorpion, you know, the MP5 and then the KP9. As far as just like some of the, I would say more, still guys, they still look expensive, but that they all come in that very similar tier. Okay. Of course, you got that nostalgia with the MP5. People will put the MP5 above all. The KP9, you know, once again, another one. And then, you know, they're just different tastes for different people. And the Scorpion, something that I've utilized. The MP5, which I've utilized as well. And then now the KP9, I own all three of them. And I like them all. They all have their, you know, pros and cons at the end of the day. But I do feel like this is a very solid gun. Shoots nine millimeter, extremely accurate. I would say, you know, 
it looks like an AK. It pretty much is an AK in nine millimeter. And when I'm saying that, the reason why I'm saying that is because you know AKs are extremely reliable at the end of the day. They can be beat the hell up and they're gonna do their job at the end of the day. And I feel the same about this gun in particular. There really isn't nothing that concerned me whatsoever about this gun because it shot phenomenally. It was reliable. You have the folding brace, the brace now, you know, they took these away, of course, when everything was going on with that, but now they are back in the brace format as well. So amazing. And I believe they feature this in the pistol format. This is a pistol. And they also have the sporter one that has the longer 16 inch barrel that comes with the stock. So you have the different, you know, type of variations that you could utilize there. We are running the Met Pro on here. I had to make it look right. You know what I'm saying? This is a classic firearm and we had to put the classic optic to go along with it and it does come with the picatinny dust cover so you can utilize whatever type of optics that you want to use there you can swap out the frame pretty much all the frames utilized on the ak-74 will fit on the kp9 so if you want to throw your, your zincos or even kalashnikov usa they have their own type of furniture if you want to have the picatinny mounts or the m lot mounts you can utilize all that as well i love this gun definitely a gun i want to run more and moving into 2024, I've told y'all already, like I wanna do more and more, you know, some competition, some more training. And this is definitely a gun I could utilize along with it because it's a fun gun. It's a fun gun, it's an accurate gun, it's a reliable gun. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do there. There is a uh, PPK-20, right, that we stated about that Russia has, which is a more updated version of this. If you've already been paying attention, you might have seen something pop around. So, uh, yeah. But we have it here, the KP9 Vityaz 1000 round review. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comment section. I wanna make sure to give you guys an updated review even more and more as we do more and more on this. My next plans is to swap out the furniture down the road and you know throw some, some dope stuff on it. So stay tuned for that 1000 round review. We out, peace.